what we uh, looked at a number of years ago was undertaking uh, microRNA profiles in malignant germ cell tumours, so a relatively rare tumour that actually affects uh, infants and children, but also uh, a tumour that goes into uh, adolescence and young adulthood. So testicular cancer is the, is the most common type of uh, cancer in, uh, sort of in, in adolescence and, and early adulthood too. So it's a, a tumour that affects a range of uh, different ages of patients. Um, the work we undertook was working, uh, looking at the microRNA profiles, which are short pieces of genetic code. And we did that in uh, children's uh, germ cell tumours. And what we found was a very, very characteristic uh, signature, whereby eight microRNAs from just uh, two microRNA clusters uh, were expressed at very, very high levels. And when we did further work, we found that that was, happened both in paediatric children's tumours as well as the adult tumours. It occurred uh, regardless of where the site of these tumours occurred in the body, so whether that was in the gonads, the ovaries or the testes, or at extragonadal sites in the body such as the abdomen, the chest or the brain, and regardless of what the malignant subtype of the tumour was. And that was the first universal finding, sort of molecular finding in this tumour. That gave us a number of options uh, in terms of diagnostics and therapy. One was to look in the bloodstream um, and find that these microRNAs were at a high level, so we can, and that's now gone from a single uh, description of a child that we did five years ago uh, to now over 1,000 patients described that this, the utility of this in the blood at diagnosis for disease monitoring for relapse. And that, so that's one aspect about diagnostics. And the other aspect is saying, well, actually, if these microRNAs, these short pieces of genetic code, and they're very specific, and they're very high levels, uh, in the tumours, could we target that and uh, use that as a target for novel therapy? And that's where the, the latter half of this is where the Children with Cancer UK grants come in. Um, what that has funded is work looking at using short pieces of genetic code to block the action of those uh, high levels of microRNAs in malignant germ cell tumour cells in the lab. It's um, important when we do the, uh, the test that we look at a range of different molecules and they're modified in lots of different ways. Some of them are modified by having a, a stronger backbone, by increasing the number of bonds between molecules in, in the uh, RNA molecule. Some of them are adapted by having a peptide added, added onto them. And the way we're, um, so we're looking at the moment at lots of different range of molecules and they seem to have an effect on affecting the growth of the cells. And what we're trying to do is find the, the best way where we maximise the effect on the growth rates but minimise sort of toxicity to the cells because if we're going to transfer this into that use for humans in the future, we obviously it's important that that doesn't have sort of off, what we call off-target effects on other organs in the body such as the liver, um, you know, the, the, the heart, lungs, kidneys, etc. So that's uh, ongoing work at the moment, uh, and we're still analysing what the, you know, the different types of molecules and which one would be the best best combination to use to block these very high levels of uh, microRNAs. Overall, the outcomes for children with malignant germ cell tumours are actually very good. So as opposed to some diseases where uh, the outcomes uh, are poor from first-line therapy, the majority of children will actually uh, receive treatment and do, do very well. So there's a number of avenues to explore. One is for children and, and also teenagers, young adults, uh, who have, we identify as having poor risk tumours. Uh, some of those patients have a, an event-free survival of as little as 50%. So I think in high-risk patient groups, uh, there's the possibility uh, to uh, develop these and, and use these sort of novel agents uh, as uh, potentially as first-line therapy. There's been a number of randomised controlled trials in poor-risk um, germ cell cancer over the last 30 or 40 years, and very few of them have shown any benefit of just escalating conventional chemotherapy treatment. So I think we have to be more intelligent about the way we approach these patients. And one way of doing that is to consider whether you, you use standard ke conventional chemotherapy agents alongside a no novel agent. I think it's unlikely that some of these novel agents will be used on their own, but they may be used alongside conventional chemotherapy agents or be used with reduced levels of conventional chemotherapy agents, which would then may reduce the side effects of treatment. Because although most children are cured and do very well, um, there's the long-term effects when you treat these children in, in teenagers, young adults at a young age include uh, second malignancies, lung toxicity, kidney damage, 
uh, an increased risk of cardiovascular problems such as um, heart attacks and strokes, perhaps 30 or 40 years down the line. So that's still a, in terms of the, the sort of type of tumour that we're treating, the age of the patients when we treat them, is side effects that are happening in their 30s or 40s, not in their 60s or 70s. That's still got an important impact on those patients and also wider health economic impacts too. Thank you.